Today I'm going to show you around the North End. There are some nice places to bike around here, and some amazing street art. This pedestrianized square near the Selkirk Bell Tower feels like the heart of the North End to me. The North End has a high proportion of indigenous peoples, even for Winnipeg, which has one of the largest indigenous populations in Canada. The North End was about 24% indigenous in 2016, versus being 11% of Winnipeg's population. The term indigenous includes First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, among many others. Just a quick content warning before I continue. I'm going to be discussing colonization and Canada's genocidal actions against indigenous peoples. Indigenous peoples lived in balance with this land we now call Winnipeg and all over Turtle Island for thousands of years. They weren't perfect, as no people are, but they understood stewardship and the sustainable preservation of precious common resources over many generations. They understood gender diversity and queerness as well. Colonizers subjected these peoples to exploitation and genocide. Specifically, the Canadian government committed genocide against indigenous peoples through residential schools and the 60s scoop, which were used to forcibly remove hundreds of thousands of indigenous children from the care of their parents and communities. Residential schools were a failed attempt to eradicate indigenous cultures by splintering communities and subjecting indigenous children to abuse and neglect. Many children were killed as a result of their treatment in residential schools and buried in unmarked graves, which are still being uncovered today. The intergenerational trauma Canada caused through these genocidal actions continues to affect our communities deeply today, and is partly the cause of Indigenous people being disproportionately represented in prison populations, poverty, and substance abuse. The North End is one of the most low-income parts of town. In 2005, the average annual household income in the North End was less than half of the Winnipeg average. In short, this is a neglected part of town, but there is still a lot of beauty, love, and indigenous culture here. There was some nice traffic calming infrastructure back there on Powers, but Redwood here is not great for biking. Again, and I'm sorry to say this, but the state of this road is pretty typical around here. This is Main Street. Main Street. Winnipeg has many bridges, several of which are in severe disrepair and overdue for maintenance the city can scarcely afford with its current budgetary priorities. Yet one of our city councillors and a mayoral candidate, Scott Gillingham, is still talking about spending over a billion dollars adding lanes and widening stroves. For context, Winnipeg's annual budget is one billion dollars, and it can barely pay its bills at the moment. The orange ribbons here are a gesture of solidarity with indigenous people. The Red River is pretty, isn't it? We're coming into Elmwood now. Here we are on a quote-unquote bike route. The city has a lot of strodes like this with bike route signs and not a single piece of bike infrastructure in sight. Not even a measly painted line or a shero on this one. I'm glad there's a bike route sign here to keep us safe. This is Henderson, consummate stroke. I 
I'd hazard a guess that this church wasn't planning to be on a strode. Up ahead, we have a pedestrian crossing on a 25 meter road with a speed limit of 60 kilometers an hour, which everyone regularly exceeds due to the high speed design of the road. Think about how ridiculous this is for a second. It's literally called Henderson Highway, and the city expects people to cross it. No wonder Manitoba and Canada more broadly have such high pedestrian fatality and injury rates. The average number of pedestrians killed by motorists per year in Canada from 2016 to 2020 was 312. For context, drivers killed 41 pedestrians in the Netherlands in 2020, which has half the population of Canada, meaning pedestrians are about four times more likely to be killed by drivers in Canada. And a far larger proportion of people in the Netherlands make trips on foot, so the comparison is even worse for Canada than it looks. And let's take a moment to recognize that the number can be zero. Oslo in Norway had zero pedestrians killed in 2019. This pedestrian bridge takes you from Elmwood back into the north end. We're not really going anywhere right now, we're just biking around for fun. These planters are a community effort at traffic calming. A very car-centric roundabout with huge lanes here. Roundabouts can be great traffic calming infrastructure, but in the US and Canada, they tend to be designed in a way that prioritizes traffic flow over pedestrian safety. This bridge on the Disraeli Freeway crosses a portion of the largest rail yard in Winnipeg, which separates the North End from downtown. There are only two rail lines here, but a little further west, there are dozens. This is just a funky apartment building. the Disraeli Freeway. Not an area I'd recommend biking or walking, but as you can see, this is also a residential area, so I'm thinking some people might have to walk and bike around here. Bit of a long crossing here. My partner and I are just chattering about directions uh, and stuff. We can go south by the Sprintess. The QVF. Yeah. Did you mind if I went to San Juan and you go up for yourself from here? Okay. Here we are yeah. back at Main Strode. You can find your way, obviously. This okay. is Main Street Project on the right, one of the biggest community health centers and social assistance organizations in Winnipeg. 
I donate to Main Street Project, and I encourage you to donate to your local organizations like this if you're able. The government has offloaded its responsibility to provide essential services to vulnerable community members onto nonprofits and charities. So they really need our support. So, what did you think? Keep in mind that I only showed a very small part of the North End, which actually encompasses 18 different neighborhoods. I love this place. I just wish it was treated more equitably.